Hey, what's up guys? My name is Noah Densmore and today we're going to be taking a look inside my camera bag. I'm going to show you all the gear that I've been using this past year and give you my in-depth review on each one of these pieces. Now, without further ado, let's get right into it. So, this is my camera bag right here. It's actually a gift from my girlfriend, Carrie Ann. Thank you, shout out to you. And it's actually an Eve case camera bag. Uh, Canvas was like the title of it. And it's a really spacious bag. It's got, I'll actually just show you right here. This is the little compartments for the camera bag. And it actually opens up over here. So you have room to put your laptop and I keep hard drives and bunch of random stuff in that section right there and it's got a little pull strap that's water resistant I guess and the whole inside and outside is weather sealed or not weather sealed but weatherproof so it'll help you in those certain situations where it's kind of raining a little bit it'll give it some protection and it actually came with one of these right here so it actually covers your entire backpack with this rain thingy right here. I've actually never used it before because I don't think I was ever in rain this severe, but just in case you need something to cover your stuff, or even if you wanna put this like over your camera, it's pretty helpful. So it's also got these little compartments right here. You could put some pins in there. I think on this side, yeah, I got my little memory cards right here. I got a microfiber towel, because who doesn't? And I got a flashlight, just in case you need to use that. All right, so now let's actually get into the camera and lenses part of the review. So for me, I've been using the Sony a6000 for the better part of the last two and a half to almost three years now. And this little camera right here has really been through it all, honestly. So this, this camera gets five stars for durability for me. And um, it puts out a great resolution too. I mean, it shoots 1080 at 24, 30, and 60 frames per second. It also does cameras at 24.3 megapixels. So it gives you pretty crispy imagery there. I would say its biggest drawback is not being able to shoot 4K. And eventually I do plan on stepping up and moving into a system that shoots 4K. And ultimately I like to get into um, a full frame sensor. So I'll move, I'll be moving out of mirrorless, you know, here shortly, but for right now it's been through a lot and it's definitely got me to where I am today. So I'm grateful for that. Another thing I wanted to say about uh, one of its cons though, are it's not really good in low light. So, you know, the low light and the ability to not shoot 4K are its biggest drawbacks. But other than that, it's a pretty solid camera to get yourself started. It's a great entry level mirrorless camera. And for that, I would recommend it. All right, now let's move into the lenses. So our first lens we got here is, it has to be tied with my favorite, if it's not my favorite, is the 50 millimeter F 1.8. So it shoots really crispy portrait pictures and just up close shots. It has a really nice bokeh blur in the background for your photos and video. One thing you'll notice right here is I actually have uh, some step up rings on the lens itself. So these step up rings are about 10 bucks, I wanna say, and they save you a lot of money because the same ND filter that fits on this 10 to 18 millimeter, I can use the same thread size with these uh, step up rings and put it on the 50 millimeter. So that's gonna save you a lot of money in the, in the long run, besides buying like a whole nother indie filter for you know, each one of your lenses, because it is really important to have those indie filters if you are doing video. So I'm gonna put this 50 millimeter to the side. We'll go on to the next lens, which we already talked about a little bit, which is the Sony 10 to 18 F4. And it's a wide lens. I actually use it a lot if I need to shoot real estate or just things super wide. I could also see the 10 to 18 being really good if you wanted to vlog yourself. You can get pretty close to your face without cutting anything out just because of how wide the composition is on this lens. 
So for that, I think it's useful and it always makes my camera bag. So the next lens we're gonna talk about is the Sigma 16mm f1.4. It's actually the lens I have on right now. And it has to be one of my favorite, uh, relatively new lenses that I got within the last three months, I wanna say. So it's the newest you know, purchase to my gear that I've had, but it does shoot really good photos. I like the video on it as well. Uh, the only drawback to it is that it doesn't have the image stabilization. But if you're using a gimbal, you know, you really don't have to worry about that. If you compare the 16 mil to the 10 to 18 mil, they're kind of apples and oranges at that point, being that they both are wide lenses, but the 16 millimeter is definitely gonna do a lot better in low light just because it can go down to f1.4, whereas the 10 to 18 only goes down to f4. So it's gonna do a lot worse in those darker environments but the 10 to 18 also gets a lot wider. So if you know, you're on a tripod and you, know, you can manipulate things a lot more, then I would go with the 10 to 18. But if you're in a run and gun type situation, you might be in some low light, then I would probably rock the 16 millimeter. So now that we're done talking about lenses, I also wanna show you, I got my Zoom H1N handy recorder right here. This recorder is gonna do really well if you're in an interview type style shoot and you need a recorder that can better manipulate your audio, it's gonna be really good for that. So the lavalier mic that I use for the Zoom is actually the Power Day Wise uh, lavalier. It's just a simple lavalier. I think it was only like 20 or 30 bucks. And um, it has the, uh, the two line inputs where you can just import right into the side of the Zoom. And then on the other side, it has an aux input where you can attach your headphones just to make sure the audio sounds good. And for that, I would recommend it. I really like it. It also doubles as a shotgun mic. So I ordered this little windscreen right here. You could slide it right on the top of the zoom and then it becomes its own shotgun microphone. This actually is really helpful with the Sony a6000 because the a6000 doesn't have an aux input. That's another thing that I don't really uh, like about it but this is a good workaround right here, is just using the Zoom H1 with this uh, windscreen attachment. And I actually have this uh, quarter inch thread attachment piece. So it just screws right onto the back of the recorder right there. And then the bottom section right here just slides right into the hot shoe of the camera, just like that, and you're good to go. I got lots of batteries, all these batteries around here. That's pretty much it for that compartment. Next part of the bag we got here is this top uh, little Velcro piece right here. And uh, this is where I keep most of like the, uh, the handy equipment, like sensor cleaning swabs as we have right here. They uh, come in real handy if my sensor is ever dirty and you get those little tiny dots on there. You just never know when it's gonna happen, except it happens when you least expect it, just know that. And uh, here's the sensor cleaner. And we got the, uh, gotta have more of these microfiber towels everywhere. Can never do any harm. We got this little, little brush, you know, if you wanna brush your ND filters or your UV filters. This has to be in my bag at all times to knock the dirt off of either a lens or your sensor and it's just a really helpful tool right here. So that's it for that bag. Oh, actually one more piece right here. This is, if I could get it out, it's got some, some Velcro on it right there. This is a Githu, Githu? I don't know, but it's a USB power pack uh, attached by USB right there to whatever you want if you need to charge a battery or a camera, you can hook it up to your camera. Actually, you can't hook it up to the A6000. That's another drawback to it. But um, later models like the A6400, I know you can use with that. And if you just need to charge your phone or something, it's definitely useful. All right, so now looking inside the bag right here, we had this little like kangaroo pouch section thing um, that I like to keep all of my, uh, hard drives and little dongles and stuff like that in there. Like this laptop charger right here goes in there. And next we got 
this little dongle piece, it's actually connected to my SD card reader. So, um, you know, my laptop, it doesn't have the um, USB readers. It only has like the, uh, the newer ones, the USB-C, I believe this is what it's called. So, have to get the dongles. And got another dongle right here. It's connected to my Seagate four terabyte external hard drive. So this drive is not what I edit on because it's a slow SSD. So it's really good for file storage. Like it's four terabytes. So it's a lot of room to work with for temporary file storage. And that's why it stays in my bag. Um, and what I use to actually edit on is two of the Samsung T5 portable SSDs. They're, they're fast SSDs, so they're good for editing. They're, they're super quick and uh, super portable. They're each one terabyte too, so that's more than enough you know, for, um, for most of my projects. Um, they don't go over one terabyte, because uh, that's a lot, so. That's that right there. And that does it for this little section right here. Oh, also I do keep generally like a notebook in here too, in case I want to write down some ideas or just kind of storyboard things out. Um, that's just my little personal thing. So this back piece right here, it actually has enough room to put uh, some, some notebooks, I guess, or maybe just some books back there, but I have my laptop, so. Just turn this around. This is the MacBook Pro um, 15 inch 2017. So it's not, you know, the 2019 version of this. It's still a couple years old, but it feels new. It feels cool to me and it's still, you know, super durable and does its job just fine. Um, obviously I don't edit on the actual desktop itself. I use those drives that we just talked about. Um, to outsource the editing and you know keep it off the hard drive on here because that'll just melt your computer if you're trying to edit it straight off a, off a, uh, a laptop. So that's pretty much all I have in my camera bag in 2019. I've been using that setup the entire year. So feel free to let me know what you've been holding in your camera bag. I'd like to see it and let me know what you do or don't like about this setup right here. Um, I'd love to connect with you guys if you want. Follow me on Instagram at Noah Densmore. And with that, I'll see you guys in the next video.